a very good evening to all of you it is with great pleasure that i introduce mr nitya shanti for the second time to our dignity chai masti center welcome sir friends you will be interested to know that mr nitya shanti has trained as a forest meditation monk for 6 years after which he set out to be a teacher of conscious living he is an internationally acclaimed teacher and has traveled to several countries he is also committed to exploring what he calls the alchemy of connection in all its forms be it with ourselves with each other or with life so now i present to you mr nitya shanti we look forward to a most interesting session this evening on instant advanced practices i'm really curious about the topic <laughs> so over to you nitya thank you so much shashi ji and uh, my mother's name is also shashi so it's lovely oh, thank you for being here and happy to be here with all of you um it's always a privilege to be with all of you and i actually feel that with a with a group like yours uh, i'm not really here to teach anything i'm mostly here to remind you of things you already know ab main thodi der ke liye aapko mute kar raha hu theek hai then i'll unmute you as required you can use the chat just to make sure that we can hear each other right so i feel my real role here is not so much to teach uh, but mostly to remind you of things you already know and sometimes life can get busy and we get caught up in various roles and responsibilities and uh, being more uh, caught up in the day to day life but once in a while it's good to be reminded of the more deeper lessons of life the more important lessons of life like they say that at the end of our life it's not about what we've done it's more about how we've lived and how we've loved right that's what really counts at the end like even if i look back at my life now i mean i'm not as old as all of you but whatever life i've lived the highlights of my life have been points of my life and i have been in states of great love states of great compassion even if it's been for a few moments or a few minutes those moments of great love great compassion those moments of feeling one with myself feeling one with my friends or the people around me and feeling one with life those have been the important moments in my life one of my teachers said that if you take a bowl i may have given this example before but i'm going to repeat it anyway uh, when you take a bowl and you drop a marble in the bowl you'll find the marble goes rotating round and round and round and eventually it'll come to rest at some point and that point is the lowest point of that bowl so my teacher said that in your whole life whatever has been the deepest state of connection you felt with yourself with the people around you with life or if you like the word god whatever has been the deepest point of connection you have felt at any time in your life that is the only thing that will come to your rescue when you are approaching death so in in other words our biggest priority is this deep deepening that inner connection nothing else comes to rescue us at that time it's our own inner connection so in today's session i'll be taking you through what i'd like to call i am what does i am mean i a m instant advanced meditations <laughs> instant advanced practice these are simple practices but just because they're simple it doesn't mean that they're not profound it doesn't mean that they're not powerful and sometimes the simplest things can be the most powerful the most profound some of these will be in the form of a short story Yes, even a story can create a shift some of them will be in the form of a short visualization and some people say oh i can't visualize yeah but if you know if i ask you where in your home is the bathroom that was the moment of visualization ha huh, you go there and turn right we open that door <laughs> well that's visualization we can all visualize i remember in one group i asked people that uh, how many of you feel you can't visualize so a few people raised their hand then i said what's the color of your car so many of them smiled oh yeah of course so think of the color of the car you have to visualize but then one person said i still don't get it i said why what happened he said i don't have a car <laughs> okay sorry wrong example <laughs> it's 
गाड़ी नहीं बेचारा क्या विजुलाइज करे सो सम ऑफ देम विल हैव अ शॉर्ट विजुलाइजेशन एंड इट इट्स नॉट अबाउट डूइंग इट परफेक्टली जस्ट डू इट होल हार्टेडली इट्स नॉट अबाउट परफेक्शन इट्स अबाउट कनेक्शन राइट सम ऑफ देम विल मेक मोर सेंस सम ऑफ देम विल मेक लेस सेंस एंड जस्ट डू इट लाइक अ गेम जस्ट डू इट प्लेफुली i find these practices very enjoyable right but anything can happen sometimes they're enjoyable sometimes they're confusing sometimes they bring up some pain inside of you it's all healthy my teacher used to say whatever happens in meditation is good i said really even if i have a headache if the headache is also good why is the headache good some energy is shifting something is moving so when you do something wholesome jab hum acha kaam karte hain you do something wholesome the result of that even in the short run it seems uncomfortable that's not a bad thing we should welcome whatever happens we should take it as ashirwad we should take it as prasad i had a very powerful experience once i was going in bombay with a friend and he said nitya can i stop the car i said why what happened he said our family temple is here i said all right let's stop so we stopped the car and then he said can uh, uh can we all go can we can we go inside the temple i have one request i said what's the request he said i have come here for 30 years i've never asked for anything i said really you've come to the temple for 30 years you never asked what do you do in the temple he said i just go and say thank you i said that's so beautiful i said let's do this so how when when was the last time you went to a temple just to say thank you you didn't ask for a single thing it's really beautiful so that's what we did we went to the temple and in front of each deity we just said thank you thank you bahut diya hai aapne thank you thank you thank you i don't know if you've heard of a saint called neem karoli baba i was reading one of the books i have a story about a man whose son was not doing too well some exam he had to give and his son was failing he'd already failed once so he said uh, i'll go to neem karoli baba he's come you also come with me and we'll ask for his blessing the son said no i will go to him after i have passed my exam So the father said, "All right." So he goes to meet Neem Karoli Baba, and he says that you know my son said that he will come to you after he's passed the exam. So Neem Karoli Baba got very emotional. So he said, "What happened? Why are you so emotional?" He said, "It is very rare that people come to me just for me. Very very rare. Most people come to me for some wish. Ye de do, wo de do, ye de do, wo de do. Give me this, give me that. It is very rare that people come to me just for me." He said, and he blessed. He he. From his blanket, he took out a puri. He said, "Ye puri khilana. Give this puri to your son." <laughs> and sure enough, he passed the exam. And later on, he even got a job in State Bank of India. And when somebody came to tell him that that young boy has joined State Bank of India, he said, "Ha, I have made a manager." Banana di. Neem Karoli Baba was mad. Made a manager. <laughs> so beautiful. He was supposed to be an avatar of Hanuman. I don't know if you heard Neem Karoli Baba. Very powerful saint of India. You might have heard of uh, Ram Das and Krishna Das, his teacher. so uh, the point is that can we do things just for doing things not for ye mil jaye wo mil jaye there's great purity in that you know when i was a buddhist monk there one of the scriptures we read was about how karma works this is the buddhist scripture so in this scripture it said if you feed a hungry animal let's say you feed a squirrel or you feed a bird so this sutra says you get the benefit of that for 100 lifetimes you feed one bird you feed one squirrel you feed one hungry dog one hungry cat 100 lifetimes you get some benefit then it said if you feed a human not even a very good human let's say this is a human who has maybe there are some humans in prison maybe there are some humans who have committed crimes these are not even very good humans but you feed a human even that he said you get benefit for 1000 lifetimes then you feed a a human who's doing good work who is a wholesome human who is helping people 100000 lifetimes and then it said if you feed a human or you serve a human who has developed even a little bit of samadhi what is samadhi your ability to be in the present and be fully absorbed in what like agar aap abhi sun rahe hain if you're listening to me you're fully absorbed in what i'm saying you're coming to the first level of samadhi this is level 1 of samadhi being fully absorbed in what you're doing It's, it's called upachara samadhi when you're moving towards absorption and when you touch the absorption it's called upachara it's called arpana samadhi so upachara is access and when you touch it it's called arpana once you've given something to someone who has samadhi the buddha says now you cannot keep track it is 
beyond calculation the benefits are beyond calculation you cannot say so many lifetimes and then if you give it to someone who has self realization in buddhism there are four levels of self realization shrota panna sagda gami anagami arahan then every every tradition even in hinduism we have different levels of we had nirvikalpa savikalpa samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi sahaj samadhi different levels of samadhi different levels of absorption the buddha says you cannot calculate now the benefits are incalculable and then he goes on he doesn't stop there he says, goes on to say if you were to give something to a buddha what are the benefits and you know what's strange even more powerful than giving something to a buddha once his mother foster mother his mother died when he was young his foster mother maha pajapati gautami had made a robe just for the buddha and she came to offer it to the buddha and the buddha said gautami offer it to the sangha she said no no i made it for you i want to offer it to you he said gautami a second time i offer it to the sangha third time but i've offered made it for you i want you to have it and then he told her why am i telling you to offer it to the sangha because when you're giving it to me it's a little bit tainted with you think you're my mother <laughs> but when you offer it to the sangha the benefit will be even more so he he's out of compassion for her he said gautami offer it to the sangha offer it to the sangha because the even higher than offering something to the buddha is offering to a practicing sangha people like right now all of us if you're here for the right reasons then in this moment we are like a practicing sangha we are interested in the truth satsang this is a interest in the truth interest in knowing something deeper willingness to know something deeper you set aside other duties preoccupations tel- television programs to be here now this is an example of satsang so anyway this goes on so i'm going to skip a little bit there are many more stages to this i'll tell you the top two things the top two things are loving wishes having loving wishes for the time it takes to milk a cow now i've not lived in a village but i imagine milking a cow will take at least 10 15 minutes <laughs> some of you may have built a cow i don't know but milking a cow would i imagine take between 10 to 20 minutes so filling your heart with thoughts of love and compassion for the time it takes to milk a cow the buddha says this is this this exceeds in 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 the power of benefit this exceeds that of all the previous things we've said till now and then he says one thing even beyond this what is beyond this the time it takes for lightning to flash across the sky which i would say is less than a second for that much time to be directly aware of impermanence what is impermanence things are arising and passing that which arises will also pass away in fact the last words spoken by the buddha i don't know how many of you are aware of this what are the last words spoken by the buddha i'll say it in pali first and i'll translate vaya dhamma sankhara you are in this is in pali language but maybe you'll understand hindi also vaya dhamma sankhara appamadena sampadetha ayam tathagatasya pachchima vacha what does it mean vaya vaya means of passing of decaying vaya uday vyay right so vaya dhamma all that arises has a nature of decay vaya dhamma sankhara all component things all composed things all created things have the nature of decay vaya dhamma sankhara understanding that all things that have arisen will fall away will decay this is the nature of things appamadena appamadena is without pramad without getting lazy lethargic sampadetha do your practice what is the practice the practice is cultivate your heart cultivate your mind cultivate a more firm foundation for yourself dhamma deepa viharati dhamma dhamma saranam na anya saranam atta deepa viharata atta saranam na anya saranam so make an island of yourself make an island of the truth dwi dwipa is like an island right so make an island of yourself make an island of dharma the truth there is no other refuge this is the highest refuge atta deepa viharata dhamma deepa viharata atta saranam na anya saranam dhamma saranam na anya saranam so the buddha is saying create a firmer foundation for yourself and that is all the wise ones have said this is the purpose of our lifetime of the human life this is a good purpose that we have to discover something deeper so one very so the point i was telling the reason i was telling you all of this is i found one very fascinating thing that when one enlightened being gives something to another enlightened being so how do you know something is karmically potent there is a gift 
it is a good gift it is given by with good intention to someone who is worthy of receiving it at some level you can give and you can give an animal also you can give a, a down dog and human also you can give anybody but all those three things count so the the consciousness you're coming from what you're giving and who you're giving it to these three things are karmic karmically potent so now here's the trick question i told you right you give an animal 100 lifetimes give a human 1000 lifetime good human 100000 lifetime beyond that is already incalculable more and more incalculable so now what happens when one enlightened being gives something to another enlightened being and the answer is there is no karma <laughs> and that's so beautiful it is done in the moment of giving it is done because there is no sense of i am doing something for someone like when i when my right hand scratch scratch my left hand it is not like the left hand said oh i'm so grateful to you i'll always remember this next time you need anything let me know it's very simple you know i just scratch my hand it's done it's complete it is i did my hand was scratchy my hand scratched the other hand is done when a mother does something for her child she doesn't feel oh i've done something so great it's very very natural my child was hungry i fed my child i didn't do anything great very normal right so i found that very powerful so even beyond doing things like this is to do things just for the sake of doing them just like we had the example of my friend going to the temple and saying i just go and say thank you i just go and say thank you so that is the foundation i'm setting for today's practices we just do them for the sake of doing them we don't do this to get this result or that result of course there may be some result it'll only be a good result but we do it with a very open mind and a very open heart and this is what makes it incredibly beneficial incredibly powerful the simplest things can go a very deep way a very long way so we'll start the first practice i'm going to give you will be in the form of a puzzle all right so now listen carefully it's a puzzle so you have to listen carefully ready okay so it goes like this i want you to imagine you're in a prison this prison has very thick walls the walls are 10 feet solid concrete the ground is solid stone the walls on all sides are solid concrete and the doors it's not just one door it is 10 doors each made of the most solid metal you can imagine with locks so 10 doors so now i want you to imagine you're inside this prison you don't have anything to break out like you don't even actually have a bed you just sleep on the floor right so it's a 10 by 10 10 feet by 10 feet you're inside this prison and there are 10 feet thick thick walls solid reinforced concrete on all sides even the ceiling is solid reinforced concrete the ground is solid stone you don't have any implements to dig out or do anything so the question is how are you going to come out of this prison how will you come out of this prison so now let's hear in the chat if you know how to open the chat on your computer then let's see what answer you're getting how will you come out of this prison let's see who gets it dhyan all right interesting prabha ji will do dhyan nagambal says imagining that i'm out you will let your mind fly away from the prison position by imagining that you're out of it interesting by opening the door in your mind you can set yourself free you're talking about our body astral travel visualization i will use my mind to imagine that i can move out interesting all right so some of you are very close but you're not quite there yet i haven't got the answer i'm looking for yet no so what do you mean by imagination rather find your peace within yourself meditation visualization my mind can tell you that i'm out So some of you are very close, but it's not, I don't see the answer I'm looking for yet. Willpower. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. Any window question mark? <laughs> no window. <laughs> But even if there was a window, there'll be ten barricaded. It'll be get barricaded all the way. Okay, so the answer. Some of you came really close, but the answer is just two words. The answer is stop. imagining you see i said imagine and you you all of you went into the prison and some of you said no i'll imagine going out are you you imagine yourself it in you don't have to you just stop imagining you don't imagine yourself going out you see 
Otherwise, you've already taken for granted that I am in prison. But the truth is, you're not in prison. You imagined yourself into that prison. So if you can imagine yourself in the prison, the way out is not to imagine yourself out of it. The, the way out is to stop imagining. That's the way out of it. So this is actually very profound teaching. Nisargadat Maharaj says, one of my teachers, he says, nothing can trouble you but your imagination. Very powerful teaching. Nothing can trouble you but your imagination. The reason we meditate, the simple, I've been meditating from the age of 16. And I'll tell you my understanding of meditation. The reason we meditate is to distinguish between reality and our thoughts about it. That's the reason we meditate. If you're mixing up reality with your thoughts about it, you're living in illusion. To the extent you can segregate and say, ah, this is reality. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. And these are my thoughts about it. Then you've begun coming out of the illusion. There are, you could say there are three levels to this, right? Level one is you're lost in your thoughts. You know, the word hypnosis, you all heard the word hypnosis. Hypnosis has got a two word definition. In fact, we did it right now with you. With you. What are the two word definition of hypnosis? Suggestion accepted. So I told all of you, imagine you're in a prison and you accepted my suggestion. All of you went into prison, <laughs> even though some of you are sitting in a very comfortable home. And then you're wondering, how do I come out? How do I come out? And you think, I'm not getting an answer. How do I come out? Willpower, I'll meditate. No, 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 just stop imagining. <laughs> no willpower is required, <laughs> right? So suggestion accepted. I made a suggestion. Imagine you're in a prison and many of you took my suggestion. You got hypnotized, actually. That's all that hypnosis is. So level one is you get hypnotized by what people say. So someone tells you, you're not a good parent. Oh, so painful. What, how can you say that? I've done so much for you. I've given my whole life for you. You are very selfish. How can you say that? I'm such a selfless person. I'm such a... And people say things and we accept it. And then we're trying to come out of it. So we get into a lot of trouble. I was watching a documentary. One of my teachers, Byron Katie. Wonderful. You can look it up. Byron Katie. B-Y-R-O-N. K-A-T-I-E. So there was a video in which somebody had attended her, her workshop. And she shared with the group that when I was a child, I broke something in the kitchen. And my mother was a single mother. She was stressed out and she was struggling to manage us kids. So she it came out of her mouth. You're a hateful, hateful child. You're a hateful, hateful child. You're a hateful, hateful child. And she took it in. She just took, as a child, she took it in. Something's wrong with me. She said, I remember that was a moment I lost my innocence. That was the moment I felt something's wrong with me. So she said recently, her own daughter dropped something in the kitchen. She, she said, you're a bad girl. You're a careless girl. And her daughter looked up to her and said, me not bad girl. Me not bad girl. <laughs> she said, oh my goodness. This little girl has the wisdom that I don't have. <laughs> when I was a child, I took it in. But this little girl said, me not a bad girl. She refused to get hypnotized, you see? Very powerful, very powerful. So when people are uh, make, giving you these kinds of suggestions, you are this, you are that, why are you taking it? Why are you taking it? And then you start struggling, Are how can you say this? How? No, 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 nothing to struggle. Just stop imagining. People will project all kinds of things onto you. That's on them. The Buddha was once walking through a village and somebody had brainwashed these villagers that Buddha is a very bad person. So if they're brainwashed, they don't know him. They began abusing him. They, they said, get out of our village. You're not welcome here. We'll not even give you water. So he and the other monks quietly walked through the village. They kept walking. They found a nice banyan tree. They sat down there. And the monks were very agitated. They said, Lord, they said such mean things, such unfair things, such false things. And you never replied to them. You never defended yourself. They said such uh, untruths about us. So Buddha smiled and said, before you became monks, did someone ever get you a gift? They said, yes, when we were householders, people would get us gifts. Then once in a while, if you refuse to take the gift, what would happen? Well, the person who brought the gift, if I refuse to take it, they will take it back themselves. He says, just so monks, they gave all these gifts. I never received the gifts. <laughs> Whatever they said went back to them. <laughs> Why did you receive their gifts? <laughs> so, oh my goodness, you're right. They gave us horrible gifts. Why did we receive them? So he told the Buddha, please teach us. Tell us also, how do we not receive the gifts? Buddha said, okay, sit down, let's teach. 
So all the practices we're learning today, same practices the Buddha also gave them, right? Don't receive these gifts. Don't receive it. So we want you to be like the sky. What does it mean to be like the sky? When people throw flowers to the sky, what happens? Flowers fall back on them. When people throw cow dung at the sky, what happens? <laughs> cow dung rains, rains down on them. When people throw daggers at the sky, oh my goodness, be careful. Daggers are going to rain down. So we want you to be like the sky. We want you to be like the sky. In Tibetan Buddhism, this is called Rigpa. What does Rigpa mean? Open sky-like awareness. The moment you're a somebody, you're in big trouble. Why? Because now people will say you're good, you're bad, you're better, you're worse, you used to be, you should be. Now you're in big trouble. So we need to shift from being a somebody to just being a space. In fact, I like to say, go from being an unhappy somebody to being a happy nobody. <laughs> you can still have a name. You can still have everything outside. But inwardly, you know, it's just I'm just a space. I'm just a space. Everyone is welcome. Birds are welcome. Clouds are welcome. Smoke is welcome. Planes are welcome. Nothing sticks. I am that space. So now we're going to get into the other practices. And they're all here to remind us of that space-like open intelligence, open awareness. The next practice we'll do is called, this comes from Adi Shankara in one of his books. Two words, I found these two words so powerful. I'm going to say the two Sanskrit words and I'll translate. So the two words by Adi Shankara is, he says, Prarabhaya Samarpitam. So beautiful. Prarabhaya Samarpitam. What does Prarabhaya mean? In your lifetime, there are certain things you cannot dodge. Like, for example, you were born to certain parents. You cannot dodge this. You cannot use willpower, nothing. You're born to certain parents means you're born to those parents. That is the reality. This is Prarabdha. Especially in the first part of our life, first three, four, five years, we don't have much control, right? So the way we were fed, the school we were put in, uh, the experiences we had, you had no real control over that. This is called Prarabdha. This is something you cannot control. You cannot change it even if you want to. That's what you went through. Some of you may be genetically predisposed to certain things, ge genetically predisposed to a very fair skin or a very dark skin, predisposed to certain diseases or not. You cannot change this. This is Prarabdha. This is something that's inbuilt. Some of us are mathematically, even from a young age, mathematically very smart. Some of us are very weak at mathematics. Some of us are very eloquent. At a young age, we can compose poetry, we can draw. Some of us can't do it. So what Adi Shankara is saying is that this body and mind has a certain destiny of its own. And a little bit you can tweak here and there, but the broad thing is set. <laughs> the broad direction of it is set. This is called Prarabdha. In fact, I had a dream, just uh, I think yesterday I had a dream in which a certain incident happened. It played out. And in the dream, I realized, hey, I don't want this incident to happen like this. I'm, it's like, it's like I'm going to rewind the tape and play it again. So I rewound the tape and somehow, even though I tried to change it, the pretty much the same thing happened all over again. I said, oh, this is so powerful. <laughs> I'm trying to change it. <laughs> but the same thing happened again. Oh, it's meant to be this way. Let's not, let's not resist it so much. You see, you cannot change what's happening, but you can change your way of looking at it. So it's not like you're trapped. It's not like you're at the, 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 the mercy of this destiny thing. Not true. You can surrender. In fact, Neem Karoli Baba, I was mentioning him right now. He also says, that if you really have a sense of surrender, if you really have a sense of faith, then God changes your destiny. But for that, you need to let go more deeply. So what are the two words? Prarabdhaya. The second word is Samarpitam. Samarpitam is I surrender. I trust. I surrender. So now whatever life has happened so far and whatever remains to be happened, remain to happen, this body and mind has its own destiny. And to me, in our spiritual journey, it is very important to not be so preoccupied with the happenings of this body and mind. I didn't complete what I was saying earlier. There were three levels. Level one is you're hypnotized. You're totally caught up in your thoughts and feelings. Level two is you get present. When you get present, that's the beginning of being dehypnotized. Because in the present, you realize, oh, there is this present reality. And then there are my thoughts about it. It's very powerful to distinguish between these two. Let me give you one question that will help you distinguish. And I'll give you two questions. The first question is, 
who am i without my stories who am i without my stories by stories i mean whoever you think you are whatever you think is happening in your life just take a short break 2 seconds 5 seconds just drop your stories very powerful who am i without my stories this is the first dehypnotizing question the second dehypnotizing question is what if this is the most perfect moment of my life so questions like these are very powerful they help us dehypnotize they go from being caught up in our thinking caught up in our maya or believing our thoughts to getting present and then level 3 is with even in level 2 there's a sense of i am the witness i am the one like people who meditate for a long time they have to be careful they can get very Id- identified with the with the merit i am the meditator i am meditating i've been meditating for 5 years 10 years 20 years i had this experience that experience be very careful this is another trap we don't meditate to have this and that experience please be very careful oh this chakra woke up this aura happened this light came this samadhi happened no that's not the reason we meditate we meditate to dissolve the meditator we meditate to dissolve the meditator if you're getting more and more caught up in the identity of being a meditator that's a different kind of trap so level 3 is you question who is meditating who is witnessing who am i dehang na hang ko hang so hang ramana maharishi says dehang na hang body i am not dehang is body dehang na hang not the body ko hang who am i so hang i am that what is that that has to be experienced right that is behind the sense of being the individual doer experiencer witness behind that so for this we should ask the question who am i where am i what am i or here's another way of putting it in simpler words because nowadays most of you i think apart from using zoom many of you are very good at ordering things from amazon <laughs> so so you should ask the question <laughs> you should ask the question who is taking delivery you know when the parcel comes when you go running to the door ha huh, that's my parcel thank you very much so who are you or well, the question is who is taking delivery of this experience this present experience has also shown up who is taking delivery oh i am oh really who am i who am i very powerful so it's a simpler way of asking who am i is who is taking delivery of this experience who is taking delivery of this joy this boredom this sadness this nostalgia who is taking delivery i am who am i dehan nahan kohan sohan so prarabdhaya samarpitam prarabdhaya samarpitam means now whatever whatever this destiny of this body and mind is samarpitam i surrender surrender means i trust trust is i have a deeper confidence it's all going to work out the way it needs to work out i'm not going to be fluttering i'll give you a practical example of this by the way this sometimes these things seem very spiritual and very fancy but practical examples my friend in delhi his mother had advanced cancer and she had to go for a particular kind of um, scan which is a very painful scan this particular scan the doctor told her i'm sorry this is a very painful scan but you have to do it so she is in the room doing it the person next to her is a soldier from the indian army strong well built man and he is crying and screaming in pain with the scan the same scan is done on her 
and she doesn't utter out a single word. She's just calm. And the doctor is also surprised. How are you so calm? This is a very painful scan. So she answers. She says, "I feel I'm lying in the lap of God. I feel I'm lying in the lap of God, and I've given this body, this pain, this mind to God. Whatever has to happen, He's taking care of." Pradabdhaya samarpita. She has surrendered it. So this is the way we have to deal with it. Why did I start with the example of the prison? I want you to start looking at the situation in your life as this. I have I have trained myself. Whenever I feel trapped, anything could be a headache, could be a misunderstanding with a friend. I feel trapped. There's no clear way out. Just trapped. Just stuck. Then I have trained myself to think. This is like that imaginary prison. <laughs> this is like that imaginary prison. Because I assume I'm a body, I'm stuck with this pain. Because I, I assume without this friend, I can't be peaceful. Without this understanding, I can't be peaceful and trapped. Who am I without that assumption? Who am I without the assumption? What happens? Poof! Instantly, there's spaciousness. So again and again, we train ourselves. Again and again, we all our sticky situations of life. You have some misunderstanding with a family member. You have some debt. You have some disappointment. Maybe someone cheated you. You know, it happens a lot with older people nowadays. That people mis misuse the trust. They call them and they make them give their OTP number, and suddenly fifty thousand rupees are gone from the bank. It's so sad, you know. This, but this happens. But don't feel vulnerable. It's all nothing is out of balance in this universe. आप सोचो आपने ज़िंदगी में किससे पचास हज़ार लिए हैं? कितने आप स्मार्ट बनने थे कभी? अरे हम तो पचास हज़ार बचा लिए हमें अच्छा तो देखो अब टाइम आ गया so like this keep a balanced mind ha kisi kahin kahin pe balance ho raha hai hamara chipta ho raha hai so we'll not feel we'll not feel very cheated and very sad like that and like that you have a deep sense of letting go deep sense of trust and surrender everything is happening the way it's meant to happen you know when you get on to, especially when you get on to the spiritual path you are not only paying off your own debt you're paying off the debt of your lineage of your parents and their parents and their parents so don't feel never feel disappointed when setbacks happen you're cleaning up you're cleaning up your entire lineage which is why in india they say you get the blessings of seven generations of the past seven ancestors way back are saying blessings 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 and that's just the beginning when you go deeper then all your entire line of ancestors are lining up their blessings jo hum nahi kar paaye aap kar rahe ho what we couldn't do you're doing we are so grateful to you you're such a spiritual warrior you keep saying bring it on bring it on bring it on i'm grateful i'm grateful i'm grateful so that is the right attitude you say bring it on punjabi mein kehte hain aand de let it come <laughs> we'll deal with it. whatever comes we'll deal with it you'll see it okay do a simple practice just put your hands on both sides of your head so joys you're touching your right and left brain hemisphere just breathe normally inviting a balance between the left brain and the right brain and in a way you're blessing yourself okay put your hand one hand on the front forehead and one hand back of the head lower part of your head back of the head like this any hand can be in front you're connecting your fore brain with your hind brain fore brain is neocortex the most recent part of the human brain hind brain is your reptilian brain that's ancient part of our human brain exchange your hands other hand comes front hand in front goes back take both your hands and just overlap on the heart area
Just breathe normally here. <clears throat> And in any way that feels comfortable, just touch your belly area. Could be the side, could be up and down. Doesn't matter. Just touch the belly area. Close your eyes. Love and accept the size of your belly. Sweet belly. Just gently release your hands and put your hands in any comfortable mudra. It could be gyan mudra. It could be interlacing your fingers. It could be one palm on top of the other. Just put your hands in any comfortable mudra. It could be on your knees, it could be together. Just be quiet for a minute. And feel as though there's a clear line of communication between the brain between the heart and between the gut. The gut, the heart, the brain. Intellect, intuition, and instinct. Intellect, intuition, instinct. Intellect is brain. Intuition is heart. Instinct is gut. Take a deep breath. And slowly open your eyes. So whenever you have to make an important decision, I'd like you to touch your brain, sides, front and back. Touch your heart, touch your gut, your belly, and just sit quietly and calmly. You'll make a better decision. Why? Because the intellect and the instinct and the intuition all together are combined. Your decision-making will be better. This is a nice practice. Whenever you have an important decision to be made, you're not sure what to do. Tell me how did it feel? just give a one sentence? How did it feel in the chat? How did it feel to do this practice? Some of you, one of you said very soothing and relaxing. Yeah, very nice. How long do we have to sit? You can sit for as long as you like. You can sit for five minutes, 10 minutes longer. It's just a, it's a good way to just be more centered. Like hold your brain, front and back, heart, your gut. Very nice. Yeah. Feeling peaceful all over. Very nice. Relaxy. <laughs> nice. Relaxing. Um, good. All right. Let's do another practice. This practice is um, would you repeat the first, the third dhyan? Would you repeat the third dhyan? What is the third dhyan? The, um, the one we did right now? Would you ask the question again, Sneha? The difference between intuition and instinct. So instinct is you often have a gut instinct. So it's like more primal. I have an instinct about this. Intuition, I would say instinct is coming more from the, you could say the animal part of us. We have instincts. And intuition is coming more from, so animal is not a bad thing, by the way. We have, we have, we have our, some of our ancestors have been animals and they have done very well living, taking care of themselves. So that instinct is something. 
And the intuition is coming in a way you could say from your higher self. It's a part of you that only knows. So in a way, instinct is coming from your ancestors and beyond and, and the part of you that the, the body wisdom is instinct. And intuition is coming from the higher chakras, the higher part of you. That's what you could say. Oh, that one, Dehan. So Dehan, Dehan, not Dehan. Dehan, Dehan is body. Dehan, Nahan. Dehan, Nahan. Kohan, Sohan. Dehan, Dehan in, in, in Sanskrit. Deha, Deha is body. Dehan, Nahan. I am not the body. Kohan, who am I? Sohan, I am that. All right, next practice we will do is quite a simple practice. Um, I want you to take the journey of a raindrop. This raindrop falls in the Himalayas. Raindrop falls in the Himalayas. And it falls on one of the beautiful mountains. Maybe it's Mount Kailash. Maybe it's some other favorite mountain of yours. And there, by the time it drops, it's already become snow. And by the time it touches... So as I'm saying this, you can either imagine it with open eyes or you can close your eyes, whatever's comfortable. This will just be a two, three minute practice. So raindrop, let's actually start with a cloud. You're a cloud, nice cloud floating in the Himalayas. And then something in you starts to change and you become a little raindrop, cute little raindrop. You make a nice journey falling all the way down, all the way down. You transform into a flake of snow. Make a soft landing on this mountain. And you become part of a glacier, huge glacier. And this glacier has some edges. And these edges start to trickle and melt and they become a small stream. And the stream joins in with the larger stream. The larger stream joins in with yet another larger stream. Nice, fresh, cool water. And little by little, it becomes part of a beautiful river, big, wide river, and it's flowing down. And what's it like to be part of this mighty river that many people worship, many people look up to? And the river turns and twists and left and right, and little by little, it gathers many things. And now you're just one minute away from losing your identity as a river. Why is that? You're about to merge into the ocean. So now in the next minute, the river of your life will merge into the ocean of this world. So allow yourself that feeling of shifting from river to ocean over the next minute. And in the next 15 seconds, it'll merge into the ocean. So allow the inner shift to happen. You're losing your name as a river. Rumi says that even the mightiest river trembles before meeting the ocean because it's going to lose its identity as a river. And it's okay to tremble. Go ahead and join the ocean. Prarabdhaya samarpitam. Prarabdhaya samarpitam.
very powerful. Take a deep breath. I once gave, uh, in one of my groups, I gave them the assignment of uh, four things to write about. So nine months, nine days, nine months, nine days, nine hours, and nine minutes. What does it mean? Nine months before you die, what would you like your last nine months to look like? So write down what will what will what will make the last nine months of your life the best nine months of your life? The last you know you know your death is coming, all right? So last nine days, what will make the last nine days the best nine days? What will make the last nine hours the best nine hours? And what will make the last nine minutes? And if you also want nine seconds, the best last nine minutes and last nine seconds. It's a very powerful exercise. You see, many of us have spent more time planning which school we'll go to, which college we'll go to, which job we'll take, which city we'll live in, which bungalow we'll buy. <laughs> we spent a lot of time planning all of this, how we'll design each room. <laughs> we spent almost no time planning our own goodbye. <laughs> but the goodbye is the most, the, is much more realistic than everything else. Right? So people who do this have a very conscious passing. There's a lovely book called Graceful Exits. I don't know if I've recommended it before. Graceful Exits is filled with stories of high quality exits. You know, one of the, uh, one of the teachers, he said, he told his students, after I die, I don't want you to cremate my body. They said, really, what do you want us to do? He said, I want you to take my bones and I want you to crush them. And I want you to mix them with atta with flour and make small pellets and then roll them down a mountain. <laughs> I say, why? What kind of wishes? Why do you want that to happen? He said, because any ant, any beetle, any living being who eats that gets nourishment from that. Then I've made a strong pratigya, I've made a strong determination that they will be on the firm path to God. They'll be on the firm path to enlightenment. He says, please take my remains and you scatter them like this across. You mix them with something edible and you scatter them. So all living beings. I find that such a powerful sankalpa. So not only in life, but even in death, this master wanted that other beings should benefit. He made the sankalpa that even in my bones, I'm leaving a powerful energy a powerful sankalpa, which will be for the benefit of all. Like I have been to, you know, I studied in Aurobindo school in New Delhi, Sri Aurobindo Ashram, some of you live in Delhi. So there's a Samadhi there. If you live in Delhi, why don't you go sometime to Sri Aurobindo Ashram? There's a Samadhi of Sri Aurobindo there. And some of his remains, some of his hair and other remains are kept there. And whenever I'd go there, I'd feel a very deep peace. In fact, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if you walk inside Sri Aurobindo Ashram, in my experience, in less than 20 steps from the busy road, there is, what is it, Sadhajan, what, what is next, next to it? Sadhajan enclave, there's IIT Delhi is there, NCERT is there. You walk inside Sri Aurobindo Ashram, in less than 20 steps, you'll feel a shift in your consciousness. If you're sensitive, you'll notice. And then you go to the Samadhi of Sri Aurobindo, you just sit there quietly. You'll find a very subtle piece subtle grace, a subtle power. Some of you may have been to Sri Aurobindo Samadhi in Pondicherry. That's also very powerful. Author of Graceful Exit. I think it's, uh, I'll pull it up. Let me actually read from the book a little bit. I have the book with me. I'll read a little bit from it. Who will crush? Actually, that's what happened. His, his disciples actually refused to do it. <laughs> they didn't have the heart to do it. <laughs> so they did not honor his teacher's wish because it was too heartbreaking for them to do it. But that was his intention. His intention was my bones should be used and crushed and then used as a way to send, send loving intentions. So now that's our next instant advanced practice, right? You may or may not have your bones crushed, <laughs> but suppose you did, 
what message would you like to be deep inside your bonds, deep inside your cells? So wherever your remains are, whether they're ashes or whether you're buried, what kind of environment will that create? What is the deepest message of your life that you want to continue long after your passing? What is your deepest sankalpa? So I'm going to give you two minutes now. All right. So just sit quietly and see what deep sankalpa is coming. That wherever your bones are, wherever your ashes are, wherever your remains are, maybe they're immersed in the Ganga, maybe they're immersed somewhere else. What sankalpa are you leaving? Uh, so go ahead, Shashi Singh, peace on earth. So then feel that. So go ahead, feel the peace on earth going deep into your bones. To do as it seems fit is also fine. So you said, let, let, let thy will be done. Let's not worry about Rajiv Gandhi's ashes. Let's focus on our <laughs> focus on your own ashes. <laughs> All right, tune in everybody, two minutes. Go deeper into yourself. Go deeper into yourself. What's the deepest message? Doesn't have to be a verbal message. And whatever you are thinking of, tathastu, tathastu, tathastu. I'll do a small chant. May this be so. May this be so. May this be so. Om Bengzara Sato Samaya Mano Palaya Bengzara Sato Teno Pa Tishta Dridho Me Bhava Suto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anu Rakto Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sarva Karma Satsame Sitam Shri Ankuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatha Gata Bendaramame Mansa Bendari Bhava Maha Samaya Sato Ang Bengzara Sato Samaya Mano Palaya Bengzara Sato Teno Pa Tishta Dridho Me Bhava Suto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sarva Karma Sutame Sitam Shri Ankuru Hung Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Bendara Mame Munsa Bendari Bhava Maha Samaya Sato Om Bengzara Sato Samaya Mano Palaya Bengzara Sato Teno Pa Tishta Dridho Me Bhava Suto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sarva Karma Sutsame Sitam Shri Ankuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatha Gata Bendara Mame Munsa Bendari Bhava Maha Samaya Sato As we were doing this practice, I got a flash of a memory from years back. I hadn't thought of this for years, but this came to me. So it's the story of Kabir, Kabir Das. 
15th, I just found the article about this. Kabir Das, 15th century Sufi poet, would have been lost in the history books like many others had it not been for the place where he chose to die. The place where Kabir Das chose to die is called Magahar, about 240 kilometers from Lucknow. It was considered to be a cursed place. The powerful Purohits, the upper class Brahmins, had declared that anyone who died in this region would not get a place in the heavens and would instead be reborn as a donkey. So Kabir, who had worked throughout his life to break myths and demolish age-old superstition and the caste system. He originally belonged to Kashi. So if you know, uh, Kabir's, he was, as a child, he was found in a basket. In fact, there's a, there's a ghat over there. I've been to that ghat, Raj Ghat. And that's where Kabir, Kabir Das's body was found. He was found as a baby in a basket. Nobody actually knows who his parents were. So Kabir was found in that basket. And he was from, from Kashi, the old name of Varanasi. And so he, should, he could have easily died in the most sacred place, which is Varanasi. And you're sure to get born in heaven, according to Hindu's Hindu tradition. So Kabir, however, did not believe that in Magahar, if you die, you will be born as a donkey. <laughs> that you'll be cursed. So he chose to die in Magahar. So what are the famous lines? Jo Kabira Kashi Mue to Rame Kua Nihora. What is the need of worshipping God if one can go simply by dying in Kashi? He summed up his, he said, you don't, if you just go by Kashi and you go to heaven, that's not the way to achieve God. Right? So he says he died, he chose, in Mag- he died to, chose to die in Magahar. And today, thousands of Kabir followers from across the world, they come to Magahar. There's a trust over there, 27 acres of land. And there is a Mazar and a Samadhi of Kabir Das. He dared to challenge the supremacy of the Purohits at a time when no one had the courage to do this. The Purohits did not like this. The legend says that Kabir chose to leave the world at the age of 120. There was a fight between Hindu and Muslim followers who will take possession of his body. When they lifted the cloth that covered his body, all they found were flowers, which they divided between them. You know, recently, oh, there's also a guffa here. A few hundred meters from the Samadhi is a guffa where Kabir Das used to meditate. So good, sometime we should all go to Magahar and see what's happening there. So we had recently gone, a few months back, we had gone to uh, Kashmir. And I don't know if you heard of a great Kashmiri saint, Lal Ded. And uh, Lal Ded was a great uh, mystic saint of Kashmir. She was, as a, young, as a young girl, she was married off. She never wanted to get married, but of course, those days, no one listens to her. So they forced her to get married. She must have been a teenager when she got married. And she was really drawn to meditation and prayer and God. And, but these people just made her do household chores all the time. And when she wouldn't listen, they'd beat her up very badly. So she went through torture, a lot of physical, emotional, mental torture for almost seven, eight years. And finally, she just ran away from that home. And in a place like Kashmir, which is so cold, she walked naked everywhere. But she was such a great saint. No one ever harassed her. Everyone just had feelings of devotion towards her. And somebody once asked her, how come you don't wear any clothes? Don't you feel shy? So she said, I don't see any men. <laughs> she didn't see any. She said, what are there to feel shy? There's no men over here. <laughs> In front of God, there's no men. She was the only God. So till today, the great teachings of, and she was actually, she actually merged the greatest teachings of Kashmir Shaivism as well as the great Sufi teachings. So she was like the the one who combined both of them. So when she passed on, again, there was a fight who will take possession of her body. By the way, you should look up the Vak of Lal Ded. The Vak of Lal Ded have become common phrases in Kashmir. I don't know if you know this. Some of you may be from Kashmir. In Kashmir, they don't bless you by saying Jitero. In India, we say Jitero. And I was surprised to find, like, I did not know this. When they say, Palo Pulo means get pregnant. I said, oh my goodness, Palo Pulo means get pregnant. <laughs> so I think these are very funny blessings. Palo Pulo, <laughs> Jite Raho. So in Kashmir, the blessing is Mojud Rose. You know what it means? Mojud Rose, be present. How beautiful. Mojud Rose. The blessing in Kashmir, this is a blessing, is probably inspired by Lal Ded. 
because the walk of lal dev have become a way of a common understanding in kashmir just like proverbs become a part of our life like kabir doha has become part of our life right so similarly with lal dev when they when they removed the shroud they found there were flowers there so the hindus took it and cremated it and the muslim people made her so we actually went to the place where they made a uh, what do you call it a tomb for her and it's, it's very small because there's only so many flowers right so it's not so big it's small and we we meditated there for a while so india is the land of saints india is the land of saints and some of us including me have gotten too brainwashed by western culture <laughs> so at this point in our life we need to come back to our roots and it is a great thing even the buddha has said to be born in the jambu dweepa he called the jambu dweepa this this v shaped country it takes a lot of good karma to be born in this land which is saturated by the blessings of the saints let's see what else we can do let's do one last thing before we get into some question answers uh this is the uh, teaching of uh, another great saint of india he's called valalar uh he's also called ramalinga swami gal and ramalinga swami from a young age was very devout child and uh, they his 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 parents did they die or did they give him i think that they died quite when he was quite young and his elder brother had to take care of him and he kept trying to put him with the various tutors various schools but uh, he would be so inspired and he he'd get this messages from god the tutors would say he's beyond us to teach <laughs> he can't teach this young boy and he basically would say that god you're giving me everything i don't need to go to a school i don't need to go to a tutor everything's just coming all the knowledge is giving me not only are you giving me knowledge you're giving me love for you and he would praise god like that so from a young age things came to him and he once had a vision of dancing shiva what is dancing shiva nataraj dancing shiva and dancing shiva gave him these words see if you can repeat them with me arut param jyoti bolie arut param jyoti again arut param jyoti thanip param karunai bolie thanip param karunai and again arut param jyoti so these four lines were given to him arut param jyoti arut param jyoti thanip param karunai arut param jyoti what's the translation supreme grace of light supreme light of grace supreme light of grace supreme light of grace showering supreme mercy and compassion supreme light of grace and so ramalinga swami said these four words were given to him directly by lord shiva these words are very curious they're not exactly sanskrit not exactly tamil they're a mixture of tamil and sanskrit so you will not they don't actually match any one language so according to ramalinga swami these four lines are your are your direct access to god and ramalinga swami is teaching the way simple he says light a small deer look at the light and repeat these four lines again and again and again arut param jyoti arut param jyoti thanip param karunai arut param jyoti and uh, what happens when you do this you're inviting that supreme grace instead of you trying to do this and that with your life you're inviting the supreme light of grace to now bear witness to your life bear witness to your thoughts bear witness to your emotions bear witness to your actions bear witness to your mistakes and your accomplishments you're allowing that light of grace to look at you now and it it shines through you and it's filled with mercy it's filled with compassion it's not going to judge you oh you're a terrible person you cheated this person you were bad to this person no it fills you with love and compassion and then ramalinga swami said do not be limited by this kind of practice be active so he really focused on not just divine worship he said be socially responsible so he would focus a lot on feeding hungry people he set up places where hungry people would be fed every single day hungry people would be fed he himself would cook and serve people and one more thing he emphasized was he said all living beings cherish their life all living beings cherish their life so wherever he heard animals were being killed he rush over there and say stop 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 you don't know what you're doing stop 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 you don't know what you're doing these animals are like our brothers and sisters don't hurt them so he really emphasized that do not take the life of living beings for your own pleasure 
So the beautiful thing about Ramalinga Swami is his whole life. So he's composed. He's one of the great Tamil poets. Forty thousand verses. Forty thousand verses. Amazing. And his life is full of miracles. He's considered one of the great Siddhas of South India. He's called Vallalar in South India. And one of the great things about him is that at the end of his life, he took the lamp from inside his room. the lamp that was always burning he put it outside he said from now on you will worship this lamp he told his disciples worship this lamp he said i'm going into this room i'm locking the door do not open it at any cost no matter what happens do not open the door and at some point here the government will come hold them off for as long as you can <laughs> that was the final instruction he goes into this room and he attains the light body so like some of the other great saints of india like nyanendra and nyaneshwar and some of the others he enters the room never to emerge from the room and outside rainbows are seen and those days the britishers were in charge so after a week they come and say what's going on how can a man be trapped inside over so they come and they force him to open the door and there's nobody there and there's just beautiful fragrances of perfume like sandalwood and other fragrances are in the air so the britishers have written a report saying that this man seems to have just disappeared into thin air <laughs> the whole village witnessed him going into the room and no one has seen him come out of the room so he attained the light body and this is what sri arobindo says is the precursor this is the this is our destiny a human human humanity is not reached the epitome of perfection yet there is we are that we are a transitory being between animal and divine we are a transitional being so i want to end with a little bit of chanting of this uh, this is by the way not limited to hinduism doesn't matter what religion you follow ramalinga swami actually said that we need a universal religion now this he actually even criticized too much of idol worship and everything he said no we have to go beyond the limitation of our religious thinking we need a global humanity is one brotherhood so it's not a it is just inviting the supreme grace of light the supreme light of grace and of compassion so listen to me or you can chant along with me अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत्म ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत्म ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत्म ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत्म ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति अरुत परम ज्योति थाने परम करुणाई अरुत परम ज्योति सो रामलिंग स्वामी इज टेलिंग अस that death is just a habit and we can break this this habit and so i think this is one of the highest teachings that is available to us coming from shri aurobindo coming from ramalinga swami and also coming from some of the traditions of uh, tibetan buddhism telling us that 
we have to break this habit of being born and dying and born and dying and born and dying and assuming that we are this body assuming that we are this mind how do you break this habit you live your life based on love and compassion love and compassion love and compassion and you have you start dehypnotizing yourself like we talked about today how do you dehypnotize yourself who am i without my stories what if this is the most perfect moment of my life who is taking delivery of this experience who is the meditator who is the doer right so like this you're practicing the two highest thing the buddha talked about the buddha said for the time it takes to milk a cow develop thoughts of loving kindness loving wishes and for the time it takes for lightning to flash across the sky be directly aware of impermanence directly aware see the breath go in and out thought arise and pass away emotion arise and pass away heart is beating in fact a better question than asking what is changing the better question is what is not changing <laughs> what will you find that's not changing everything is changing but instead of thinking about it directly experience it directly experience it this leads to intuitive wisdom the same intuitive wisdom that ramalinga swami had he said everything god has given me directly i have not required not depended on books i have not depended on teachers it has come to me directly the mantra we've learned today arut param jyoti arut param jyoti dhanip param karunai arut param jyoti is a mantra directly from that supreme you can call it shiva krishna uh, jesus anything but there is something beyond that that supreme light is coming through don't get caught up in uh, ideas right ramalinga swami referred to god as supreme light of grace arut param jyoti he said rely on that trust that and um, if you go to youtube you'll find for 3 hours we've chanted this mantra so i i can share with kiran and then he can share with all of you this youtube link and for 3 hours we chanted that so you also learn this every day light a little lamp sit in front of it and chant this mantra for a little while and like this at this stage in your life you should start now withdrawing from over fascination uh, with people and things i believe there's a reason why eyesight starts fading hearing starts fading taste start fading smell start fading there's a reason for this and the reason is life is giving us one last chance ab to anturmukhi ho jao at least now look inward <laughs> whole life you've been looking out and seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting last chance at least now look inward there's nothing much to see now there's nothing much to hear now without hearing aid you can't hear without glasses you can't see tastes are fading smells are fading touch is not so clear anymore last chance antar mukhi ho jao look inside now bas ek kaam karo khud ko khali karo go from being a unhappy somebody stop rest, resting on old laurels oh i used to be director of this company and i've done this and done that okay that's done nobody cares about that anymore now it's time for you to just be not be this or that just be and in that being everything you need is given to you prarabdhaya samarpitam prarabdhaya samarpitam i trust like sai baba says shraddha and saburi shraddha is deep faith deep trust i like the word confidence more than faith i like the word confidence shraddha is i have confidence whatever is happening is happening for my best the whole world is conspiring on my behalf byron kerry says life is not happening to you life is happening for you for what for your awakening so prarabdhaya samarpitam shraddha is confidence and saburi is infinite patience infinite patience because you're not only working out your stuff you're working out stuff from your entire lineage now it's time to go from being a spiritual warrior to being a spiritual warrior right and so today's practices were for a reminder for all of us like i said i don't think i'm teaching you anything you already know this but once in a while we can all benefit from a reminder i can also benefit from a reminder uh, recently my book has come out you can check it out it's called unburden and you can order it on amazon if you like so some of the things i've said here are shared in this book as well so go ahead and check out this book if you like it's called unburden and should be available on amazon so now let me give you a chance to raise your hand and if you want to ask a question or something i can give you a chance to get unmuted i can unmute you one by one if you raise your hand let me just go to the gallery view and if you want to say something or ask something you can have a small interaction let me first invite shashi if she wants to say something
Gopal ji, unmute kariye. Yeah, Shashi, go ahead. Yeah, very nice uh, talk, uh, Nitya. I've heard you before. And every time I hear, I learn something new. I think the message you gave about us looking inwards is really beautiful, especially now that we are in a golden years. So we need to shift our focus to higher things, just besides just the materialistic world. Thank you so much. Excellent talk. Thank you, my dear. And Pami Singh Ji, bolye. Unmute, dara, unmute kare. I find it very, very difficult, these things, which are, how will we do? There should be some group that, uh, like you, somebody takes us to that meditation. You're telling, go with yourself. We are so much distracted with the households and other things. It's very difficult for us. So join Kari. I have, see, first of all, on YouTube, you'll find over 150 guided meditations by me. You can check that out. Then I have a lot of live sessions starting from 14 February. I'll be teaching every day. Okay. So go to my website, nitashanti.com and you will find details there. You can join that if you like. Okay. So like this, you can find out and you, you go with the teacher you resonate with. It doesn't have to be with me. If you like the way I teach, then come and join me. A lot of stuff is free. Some of it you, some of it you can sign up for. Okay. And uh, otherwise, go with any teacher. India has no shortage of great teachers, great masters. And if you sincerely say it, like you've said right now, I need guidance, I need support, the right teacher will show up for you. Yeah. But we have to be willing to ask and when the guidance comes, we should be willing to follow it. Okay. India, there is no shortage. In fact, you know, I don't think of India as a country. People say India as a country. I said, no, India is not a country. India is a teacher. India is, an, is, a, is a field of grace mm -hmm. and it responds to your sankalpa. If you're here to make money, you'll make money. If you're here to be a tourist, you'll be a tourist. But if you're here to ask for the highest, like uh, Neem Karoli, you began with the story of Neem Karoli Baba and that boy said, I'll not meet Neem Karoli Baba until I pass my exam. And Neem Karoli Baba began crying. He said, it is so rare that someone comes to me just for me. So very few people come to this country and they ask for the highest. The highest is available, but very few will ask for it. So now that you're asking for it, it will definitely come to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice session. Thank, Thank you. Good. Good. Can you unmute, Vinodji? Yeah. Yes. Very mesmerizing discourse by you, my dear. But very confusing also. Can you or your guru throw light on this concept of life and death cycle? Dekhi, life and death, uh, whether you believe in past or future, doesn't matter so much. This life that we have to believe, this life is here in front of us. And now we have to ask ourselves, what is the way, what is the good way to live our life uh, in terms of our thoughts, our words, our actions? And more than listening to me or listening to the Buddha or listening to any teacher, it's important for us to reflect on our own life. Like, for example, as a child, I noticed when I tell a lie, I have to tell a hundred lies to hide that lie. It was very difficult to remember something. Then I realized well, telling the truth is a better principle. So like this, I realized when I went for Vipassana meditation, I was 16 years old. And I realized, my goodness, I'm creating my own troubles. Here, there's no one has to trouble me. Teachers are not here. Friends are not here. Parents are not here. I'm only troubling myself. Then a big realization happened. I'm my own tormentor. I'm my own mentor and I'm my own tormentor. So for me, there, I don't know past life, future life, but this life is there. And whatever time we have, we don't know how long we have in this world, but let us use it in a good way. And the best way that I've learned is three things, to love deeply, to listen deeply, and to be silent as deeply as possible. So these three things for me are the way I guide my, my own life. Deep listening, deep love, and deep silence. What is deep listening? It's a combination of deep love, deep love and deep silence. What is deep love? It's a combination of deep listening and deep silence. What is deep silence? It's a combination of deep listening and deep love. So this is how I have lived my life. And I would just say, look, look back. You're, the best book you'll read is the book of your own life. There is a person I know in Pune. Uh, every year, he uh, writes down his best life lessons. And he makes a document and he passes it to all his loved ones. So this is the most updated copy or copy of my life lessons. So I don't know if I live another year. 
I find that very beautiful that he reflects on his own life and he makes his life lessons. So Vinod ji, I'm sure you have very powerful lessons from your life, and the answer to your question is in your own life, and you'll get the answer as you reflect on it. Well, what about the body and soul? The body is uh, the the so what I what you call soul is that which is aware, right? So that which is aware of the body, the thoughts, the emotions is called the soul. So as you come to that place of I am, the witness consciousness, witness consciousness for me is same as soul consciousness. So when you meditate, you you shift your uh, being preoccupied with thinking, preoccupied with emotion, preoccupied with the body awareness, and you come to a place of just witnessing. And the more you do that, the the more you become uh, unafraid of dying and death because you're, you're a part of you stands back, a part of you is witnessing the mind working, the body working, the emotions working. That's called soul consciousness. But then there's something beyond soul conscious, beyond the atma is paramatma, right? So then who? That's why again you ask, who am I? Who is the witness? Who is the one that is aware? And that's how we shift from soul consciousness to God consciousness. These are all experiential things. As you practice, it will become clearer for you. Hello, sir. Can you give me one second, please? Yes, go ahead. Yes. So, so Vinod ji, thank you for sharing and asking. Uh, Rajakun ji, please go ahead. I always talk to myself. I don't listen to others. I talk to myself. I advise my friends and others also. Always talk to yourself. Listen to you yourself. Then decide. Very good. Very good. That I, I am so happy, and I am successful in my life without any worries. Beautiful. You're getting guided from inside. Yeah. I don't anticipate. I don't expect. I don't dis get disappointed. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Very Wonderful. nice uh, thing you are given. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, it's the grace of all all the teachers, and we are just representing all of them. Gopalji, try again. You've been raising your hand. Try to unmute. Sir, what meditation? You know, what is the best way of meditation, and what do you do in meditation? Yeah, Sir, great. Focus on breathing and something. Yeah, so there is no best way as such because different people have different affinities. It's like asking, what is the best food to eat? Mm. Uh, there's no one best food to eat. There are many different foods that will benefit you. Uh, what I would say is try a few different ones. Like if you go to YouTube and search for my name, my name is written over here, Nitya Shanti. Search for my name and search for meditation, or search for daily practice, mm -hmm. and you'll get hundreds of videos. And try them. Some of them are simple, like you said, breath meditation. Some of them are based on love and compassion. Some of them are a little more creative, a little different. And try a few. I even have a course. Again, if Kiran is interested, if you're interested, I can give Kiran a link. I have a six-month meditation course. So you can check out that six-month meditation course and then see that I've shared different meditations there and then see which one you find most helpful. Ultimately, it's not about which is the best meditation. Mm -hmm. It is which one do you find that it works for you the best. It really suits your personality. You really find mm -hmm. it helpful. Mm -hmm. Like for some people, mantra works very well. For some people, something yeah. like walking meditation, breath meditation works very well. For some people, a visualization works very well. Uh, the, the, the best thing I can tell you is that whatever you are considering the goal, whatever you're considering the ultimate, right? Whatever the aim of your meditation is or any sadhana is, the best advice I can give you is make the goal the path. Make the goal the path. So like, for example, your goal is ultimate peace. All right, then you practice ultimate. Say, okay, Arut Param Jyoti, ultimate peace now, right? So whatever your ultimate goal is, you make that the path. Otherwise you create separation. You say, oh, I'm here, I want to get there. There's nowhere to get. There's nowhere to get. Whatever your ultimate goal is, it's a state of consciousness. You access that state of consciousness right now. That is the best possible meditation. That's what you say. At this point of time in our life, we have to go inward. So the whole idea of meditation is to go inward. It is to go inward. It is to inward or even the out idea of inward, outward will eventually disappear. This is also a concept, inward and outward. Like for example, if you are serving food to the hungry people, that's the kind of meditation actually. You're doing something wholeheartedly. That's the kind of meditation. You could be taking a morning walk. Yeah. That can, that's the kind of meditation, actually. You should do anything wholeheartedly. The difference between meditation and concentration. Concentration is, it is exclusive attention. So I say, look only at my finger, nothing else. That's a concentration. But then I say, bring in everything in your visual field, everything in your auditory field, everything that you're feeling, that's meditation. Meditation is inclusive attention. Exclusive attention, inclusive attention. So concentration is helpful, but we have to go beyond concentration into meditation. Meditation is inclusive. So when you have that inclusive awareness, 
like one of the shortest discourses the buddha gave was he told a person who was about to die he told that person in seeing let there just be seeing in hearing let there just be hearing in smelling let there just be smell in tasting let there just be taste in feeling let there just be feeling whatever is happening let it just happen don't add a layer of likes and dislikes don't add a layer of oh i am seeing i am hearing no it's just a scene seeing is happening hearing is happening smelling tasting touching is happening this is inclusive attention this is correct meditation inclusive attention yeah right beautiful thank you so much we'll take one last question from raguji before we end raguji go ahead very nice of you i want to only praise you because your voice itself is the hypnotizing us or of us we are going off of <laughs> meditation by your talk itself right. of course i am doing the transcendental meditation for a long time Lovely. and also art of living meditation i know that uh-huh. and brahma kumari samajam also i know here yeah. and there one or two uh, the management techniques there also nait i have undergone a management meditation and all wow. and they are all good as you rightly said i used to tell my people you just do your morning prayer sincerely 15 to 20 minutes without attending to a milkman or paper man or other man calling you immediately you say yes yes attend that and then you say the prayer it is no meditation so simple prayer itself meditation as you rightly told we have to keep ourselves fully engaged in that that way as you said even walking walking with a some concentration and all is a meditation you are doing very nicely your talk is very nice when you talk automatically without any any efforts we will go for meditation thank you thank you so much and i really appreciate that and i just want to say thank you all for uh, listening to me it takes a lot of wisdom to listen to someone younger than you and i appreciate i receive your whenever i'm called to give these talks i always accept because one I've, last uh, this thing you can yes, play the vid- you can play the video uh, of chanting and then also meditate in that yeah you can you can just listen to the chanting video that i have there and you can just uh, chant along with it or just listen to it both are fine that's also fine okay okay not, yeah okay And yeah, when so you say to, you, yeah, go ahead. When you say you go inward, Aji. So, what do do you mean by that? By going inward, we just mean be aware of what's happening inside of you. Normally, we are focused on what's happening outside. Right. So be aware of your inner emotions. Be aware of your inner thoughts. Just okay. be aware. Come in awareness. In fact, like I said, inner outer also it's an arbitrary thing. What is inner? Mm. Actually, everything is outside. Even your body right. is outside. Mm. Inside is just silence. Inside there is silence. no objects. it is object less actually so the moment you are perceiving something even your thoughts actually not inside thought is also an object it's also inside. outside the inside you will taste in a state of pure being where there's no this and that that is the truth right 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 thank you so right. much thank you thank you so much for attending today's session lovely. and for listening to me with such lovely a discourse opinions. very nice thank you uh, over to i'm not sure akiran who's going to be uh, yeah. ending thank you thank you i request uh, madhu ji is go to you madhu ji yes, mr rama swami will give vote of thanks mr thank rama you. swami then can we unmute mr <laughs> rama swami mr rama swami if you raise your hand then i can unmute you there you are okay yeah go ahead you can unmute please unmute we can't hear you yet you have to unmute Can you press okay. the button? Can you hear us? Now we can hear you. Now we can. You can hear. Okay. My name is Srinivas. Ramaswamy is my father's name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. He's my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> I I have heard Shashi so many times. <laughs> And uh, sorry, Nitya, so many times. the first time was in his mother's house that is shashi's house yeah we had a small game and that was a very beautiful game it explained so many things it was very nice similarly every time i have heard nitya shanti the talk has been different enlightening and very very beautiful very nice experience you feel elevate or the better word will be mesmerized mm. and today's talk nitya shanti has spoken about 
saints right from Kashmir to Tamil Nadu. He has covered all, people from all walks of life. Jnaneshwar, Ramdas, Kabir, everybody. And this is something wonderful. And in every talk which I have heard, there is nothing repetitive. Not a, not a single word is repeated. Which means, though he has seen the audiences and he has given the uh, audience, the same audiences an earlier talk, he has taken care to see that he talks something different and doesn't repeat what he has done earlier. This is something fantastic. This is fantastic because I have not seen anybody else who has done this because everybody, they have a set um, way of talking something and they more or less repeat the same things to all the audiences. So that way, this is wonderful. The vast knowledge that you have is showing in this. On, on behalf of Dignity, I thank you for all this beautiful talk, wonderful talk. And from the way people have responded, you yourself would have realized that everybody simply loved it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Lots of love and have a lovely evening, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.